Now, let's say what is instruction count and CPI. So, we know clock cycles equal to instruction count, that means number of instructions in a program, multiplied by cycle per instruction, that means how many cycles each instruction requires. And then CPU time is equal to instruction count into num instruction count means number of instructions into clock cycle per instruction which is CPI and we need to have clock cycle time what would be the duration of each clock cycle. So if you simplify it uh, in further then we get instruction count into clock cycle per instruction over clock rate. This is the equation for CPU time. Now, instruction count of a program is determined by the program itself, instruction set architecture and compiler, which is this is a uh, software one. Then, average cycle per instruction, average cycle, ever, ever, average cycle per instruction uh, determined by the CPU hardware. If different instruction have different CPI, then average CPI affected by instruction mix. Instruction mix means uh, in this this architecture or any architecture, the, the instruction has different types. For our architecture, which is our uh, the architecture that we are going to uh, study, we already have discussed that we have three types of instruction. One is R, one is I, and the other one is J. So, if you have a program where there is instruction mix like instruction uh, coming from R type, coming from I type, coming from J type and all of them are in a program, it creates an instruction mix and this instruction, these different instructions, I mean this R type, I type and J type, these three types of instruction, they have different uh, time requirement for executing each instruction. So, if we have a mix of instruction, then we'll have a different uh, requirement different time requirement for that instruction mix consider an example let's say we have computer a and computer b for computer a cycle time is 250 picosecond which is given here it's uh, two, uh, 250 picoseconds and cpi for that is also given uh, equal to 2 for computer b cycle time is 500 picoseconds and CPI is also given which is 1.2. By the way, they are using the same ISA. Let's assume they are using MIPS as MIPS is the architecture that we are going to discuss uh, in our course. So, our job is to figure out which computer is faster and by how much. So, we know the equation of CPU time. CPU time is equal to instruction count, CPI and clock cycle time. Now, so if we try to figure out CPU time for computer A, which is instruction count, CPI of A and cycle time of A. Now, since we do not know how many instructions were there because we are only given cycle time and CPI for both the cases, for both the computers. Now, let's assume instruction count is i so instruction count is given as i i into 2.5 which is uh, cpi for uh, computer a and then we have the cycle time which is 250 picosecond now you multiply its uh, i into 500 picosecond for computer b instruction count cpi of b and cycle time of b so both of the uh, since we are working on the same number of instructions, so in this case we, are, we also consider instruction count is equal to i, and then it's uh, the CPI is equal to 1.2, and 500 picosecond is the cycle time. So it's i into 600 picosecond. So how can we find that? It's like a CPU time of B over CPU time of A, which is 1.2. So, the uh, computer is uh, 1.2 times faster than the uh, uh, computer B. Okay. So, this is how we, we can figure out uh, which one is faster and by how much. Now, 
CPI in more detail. If we discuss CPI in more detail, then if different instruction classes take different number of cycles, as, as we already have, uh, and I, I already have mentioned that we have R type, I type and J type instruction formats. Uh, so these are of different classes. Now in a program, we'll have a mix of instruction sets, a mix of instructions uh, from different classes. So uh, which means different classes, uh, different instruction classes take different number of cycles. We, I also have a, a, a mentioned that these uh, these three classes, these three classes requires different uh, clock cycles. So uh, R may require uh, le less time than I, J might require less time than I. You, you never know. We'll see that which uh, which instruction or which type of instruction takes the longer time to lo longest to execute. But that's later. But for the time being, just assume that each of these types takes different time to execute. Now, so if that is the case, then uh, the clock cycle, the total clock cycle that we can get is sum i is equal to 1 up to n. So if, since we have three types of instructions, so this n will be, this one will be 3. This n will be 3. So since we have three types of instructions. So, Let's say R is a 1, I is a 2, and J is 3. So based on that, we can figure out the total number of uh, clock cycle that we require. And then we need to figure out weighted average CPI. So how can we do that? It's simple. That clock cycle that we need divided by the total number of instruction. This instruction count, uh, instruction count means total number of instruction, total instruction that we have. So if we, if we divide that, that is our average uh, CPI. So most of the cases or uh, almost every cases, we use average CPI. That's why in, uh, in, the, in the previous slide, you saw that the, for computer B, the CPI was 1.2. It's not 1, not 2, it's 1.2, which means it was average clock cycle, average CPI. Now, another example, alternative compiled code sequences using instruction classes A, B, and C. We have seen in the last slide that we have three types of instruction, R, I, and J. Let's say for the sake of this example, we have three types of instruction classes A, B, and C. What this table says that CPI for class A, uh, as we have discussed that uh, each classes will take different uh, time. Uh, to execute. So let's say class A takes one uh, clock cycle, class B takes two clock cycle, and class C takes three clock cycle. And let's say we have two different code sequence, sequence one and sequence two. In sequence one, A type of instruction, in sequence one, A type instruction, we have, uh, sorry, uh, let me erase this, this one. Uh, select the color. So in in sequence one, in sequence one we have two uh, two instructions of class A, one instruction of class B, and two instruction of class C. So we have total uh, five instructions. Okay. Uh, now, sorry. Uh, Yes, five instructions. And then uh, in uh, instruction sequence two, uh, we have class A, four instructions of class A, one instructions of one instruction of class B, and one instruction of class. So we have six instructions. Now let's uh, calculate clock cycle requires for sequence one. For sequence one, we have uh, a type of instruction two. And clock A type instruction takes one C, C, uh, CPI for type A is one, so two into one plus one into two plus two into three, so which is ten. So average CPI is equal to two for clock uh, for sequence sequence two. Uh, we have total six uh, six instructions. Uh, so four into one, two into one, uh, four into one plus two into one plus three into one which is 9. So average CPI for sequence 2 is 
which means sequence 2 would require less time than compared to CP and CP, uh, sequence 1. So the performance uh, summary, if we, if we try to summarize the performance, which means uh, the CPU time, if we try to figure out, finally try to figure out the CPU time, uh, the CPU time would be instructions, uh, that means number of instructions in a program, and then clock cycles per instructions, and then seconds cycle times. So this is sometimes called the performance equation. And now, what are the factors that this performance, uh, this performance equation depends on? It depends on the algorithm because algorithm affects the number of instructions. Optimum al algorithm would give you less instructions and the algorithm that is uh, not so carefully designed would give you more instructions. And if you have more instructions, then it will uh, definitely impact on the clock cycle per instruction. Programming language also affects the instruction count as well as CPI and compiler affects instruction count and CPI as well and instruction set architecture affects instruction count, CPI and cycle time. So these are the things that, uh, that uh, can put impact on the uh, performance equation uh, or the CPU time.